Right, we're ready with row three. And to start row three, we're going to start with the edge triangle, as we've mentioned. And um, it's not a triangle where we're going to start with seven straight off, seven loops straight off. We're going to build it up from nothing to seven. Um, but we're ultimately going to end with seven. Now, here's a little tip for you. If you're not too sure where to start, and I will just show you where I'm going to start. I'm going to start in this stitch here. But if you're not too sure where to start, count backwards. I know my seventh, I want my seventh one uh, uh, loop to fall in, in, this, in this kind of um, peak part of this square. So if I count back from seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, there is where my hook needs to go. I do this a lot, folks, when I'm learning something or if a pattern's quite complicated, I count backwards a lot because it tends to give me a good accurate starting point and I end up un undoing less. It's just possibly just me, but it might help you, who knows. So anyway, to start with, oh, it's always, don't you find it fiddly to start with when you're just pulling up a loop? I do. Start with just pull up a loop and pulling up loops should be familiar territory to you now. You've built up a triangle like this already because we're working into it right now. Um, but I want to just remind you of it and you're working into a square this time rather than to a chain. So let's go. So I've pulled up two loops and I'm going to just yarn over and pull through two, which is nicely familiar for us now. Little reminder that when we were building up the triangle, we, we're working to, do you remember we worked into the left leg of the V? So we're going to do that this time as well. So we're going to pick up that one. We've now got two loops on our hook. We need one more. So I'm going to go into the next stitch along, just as if you know we were doing any kind of normal crochet. I've now got three loops on the hook. Yarn over through two, yarn over through two, and it's given me my first upright to work into. My first upright is this one here. Can you see this one here? Miss those those two sort of bits of the stitch there, we're going into this one here. <laughs> can't do it. Oh, I can't do it. No, can't do it. I'll show you with my hook. <laughs> it's very tricky to look at a, a video and work your hand somewhere else. So, okay, there we go. Did you see? Let's do that again. Into there. Okay, yarn over, pull up a loop. That's two. We go into the left leg of the V. That's three pick up a stitch, that's four. So you, is this coming back? Is it all coming back to you now? In other words, a lovely Celine Dion. Um, upright, we've got two uprights now. Upright, I bet it is, isn't it? Left leg of V, stitch. So five, here we go. One, two, three, four. One upright, two uprights, three uprights, left leg of B, four. Four, I don't know, just randomly said four, but in fact we've got six loops on the hook. Try to ignore that, two, three, four, five, okay. Flying along now and you can see that triangle coming out of nothing. I love it. Are you addicted yet? Because I totally am. So I've gone through all my uprights. I'm going through the left leg of the V. How many have I got? Two, four, six loops on the hook. Here's my seventh. Ta-da! Let's go all the way back. Two, 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 and two. And let's just have a look at that. Oh, look at that. Triangle. Beautiful. You know now how we finish off triangles and squares, it's with the super, super slip stitches into the upright. So let's go along, we need six of them. That's one. So we're going to do two, we're going to do five into uprights and one into the next stitch along. So it's three, four, there's my five uprights, five and my last slip, sti slip stitch, that's easy for me to say, I'm going to pick up the next stitch along do a slip stitch off that way. Okay, so there is our beginning chain, and now we're straight into making squares again, so you know where you're going with that. I will meet you at the other end of this row to show you the uh, end triangle. 
Right, I've finished all the squares for this row and I've got to finish off with an ending triangle just like we did on row one. And it's made exactly the same as the one on row one. So I won't bore you too much with it. But the only difference is we're not working into a chain anymore. We're working into stitches. So I'm going to give you a quick reminder. This is where we start with seven. And each time, each pass, we, we drop down the loops by one. Do you remember? So we start with seven. Let's do it now. And as we go along, you'll see two, four, five. One, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Can't count. Six and one in the end there. Seven. As, as normal, yarn over through two all the way along. So we've started with seven. Hold that in your lovely heads. We now need to go down to six. It's kind of um, obvious if you think about it when we get to the end because there's nowhere to pick up a chain or pick up another stitch, is there? Because we're working into thin air. So all we've got is our uprights to work with. So we go through all our uprights to start with and that will give us six loops on the hook. Back and through as normal. Now we're going to go five. So we're not going to work all the uprights this time. One on the one loop on there already, so two, three, four, and last one in there. Five. We're creating the sort of straight edge of the of the piece now. That was five loops. I'm terrible at this because I completely forget all the time where I'm up to. Five. And this is going to be four. This next one through it just obviously gets quicker each time because you've got your less to work. So three loops and two loops and you're done. So I'm going to pull that through and fasten off now. I'll just take the hook out and show you. So all of your um Odd numbered rows are going to have a, st oh dear it's so curly, all of your odd numbered rows are going to have a starting and finishing triangle to keep the edges straight. Let's just have a quick look at the sample piece where it's not quite so curly. So here we go, here's my sample piece. So row one, row three, edge triangle. So as you go up, one, three, five, seven, nine, they're all going to have edge triangles just like that. Okay, so the last thing we need to look at is filling in the top and bottom. I've done it in yellow here, so it's really, really obvious. We get a nice flat edge here. We're going to have a flat edge along the bottom when we're finished. Um, and so that's what we need to learn next.